Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And every week, especially this week, we're a little excited. Every week, Mama and I are always delighted to sit with you, to welcome you to Remnant House, to welcome you as you gather together on the Sabbath day, yes. remembering to keep it holy. And we set, we shout out to our members, but we also shout out to our friends, visitors, um, other believers in other folds. Hey, we shout out to all of you. Amen. Uh, you don't have to be a member of Remnant House for us to shout out to you and be grateful for you. And we just we just send love and blessings throughout the entirety of the body of Mashiach, all 12 tribes that are awakening in the nations. We send shalom to all of you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, whom the West calls Jesus the Christ. And we send out blessings to all of you that you would have a blessed Sabbath day, remembering to keep it Holy hallelujah. Amen. We're having Amen. a great day. It's just a great day. <laughs> hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I don't know about the rest of you, but I need my Sabbath oh, rest. No, I need bad. the Sabbath day. I, yes. I don't know what else you all are doing, and I don't know if anything going on in the world stresses you out, and I don't know if you feel tired at the end of the week, but when I come rolling into Shabbat, I feel like Fred Flintstone just barely getting home. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel like, wow, I've put all I have out there, and now I'm ready for rest. I'm ready for shalom. I'm ready for peace. I'm ready for peace that passes all my understanding. Amen. Because I may know if you lean upon your own understanding, you're going to get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. As we say from where I come from, you better check yourself for you wreck yourself and find yourself <laughs> by yourself. Amen. Oh. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of that. And all throughout the week, one of the things that he impressed upon me, and I just want to share this real quick, because we emphasize, like we're a house that emphasizes the shalom. Yes. We emphasize the Sabbath. We emphasize the feast. We emphasize rest. Yes. But don't get it twisted. There's six days of work. And I got to tell you, we need to rediscover the meaning of the word work it. Come on, work it. Right. Because we aren't working. We're not working like I believe he wants us to be working the, ha the harvest to work six days to do all out and then rest because you had a work week. And most uh, today I, I see very poor work ethic out there. A lot of people will complain the minute they get any kind of heavy burden, any kind of work is required of them. They're looking for a way out. They're looking to escape it instead of doing a great job. There used to be a time in this great nation where people were proud of their work. Um, that seems to have waned. Uh, you seem to there seems to be less and less of that. And so uh, let me just encourage you who are children of light. Don't be that way. Instead, let me encourage you to do your best to serve as you are uh, to serve as you're serving unto Mashiach, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to serve each other as you serve Messiah. And so, when you look at a human, you can get disrespectful. How many know that people disrespect their bosses and disrespect their places of employment because they don't see it as Messiah giving them a job? But let me tell you something: if you're this is free for somebody, if you're truly growing up in the kingdom, you won't just not need employment; you'll provide. 
employment. Oh, come on now, preach it. Amen. That's how you know you're growing up. And so, saints, I believe that Yahuwah is calling us to light. I believe he wants us to be children of light. How many can see right now, some of you out there on the, on the, on the web are seeing children of darkness left and right. Now, let me help you out. There's the children of light and the children of darkness. And the children of darkness are doing everything they can to cloak themselves and you in darkness. Uh, because their deeds are evil. All right, why do men love darkness? Because their deeds are evil. They don't want you to know what they did. Why are they covering up walls? Why are they covering up windows? They don't want you to see inside. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to see what they're doing in closed doors. But who do we work for? We work for the spirit of truth, right? right? The Ruach HaKodesh is always going to bust out lies. Right. So that which is hidden will be revealed. That which is back there is coming out. So you as a child of light, if you're a son of the Most High Elohim and you're walking in the light of the glorious gospel of the kingdom, then you are in a different place. Amen. And you're not going to sound like you make any sense at all to the people living in darkness. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make any sense. How do I know this? Because Messiah himself, himself came to Israel who had been taught from children the commandments. Mm -hmm. And even them, he said, they sat in darkness. Oh. And they were taught Torah from children. And they sat in darkness. That's what he said. So those that think that just because they study the scripture, they study the Torah or the law or the commandments of Yahuwah, that's no, it is in the doing. We're going to get there today. We're going to get to finding out how we walk in light. We're supposed to be not just children who see a light. We're supposed to be children who walk in it. Come on, somebody help me preach this thing. Amen. And so again, remember that we have to be careful with our own understanding. And so saints, let us seek the scripture. Let's seek him while he may be found, while there's opportunity. Some of you are seeing all the things going on in the world, getting really distracted by it. But remember what he said. He said the word comes in and the third and most brutal test is the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things will come in and choke the word yeah. to make it unfruitful. So it does not bear fruit in your life. So it doesn't produce. In other words, it stopped. It, it, the enemy wants to stop the progress of the word of Elohim manifesting in your life to bring you to that good latter end that he spoke of. And so we're going to start today in the book of Genesis. We're going to talk about light. How many want to be a child of light? Does anybody out there want to be a child of light? Amen. He told us to be light bearers, right? Amen. That we are to carry his light to the nations. And we're going to get to this today. So I hope that you are determined in your heart. I pray that every one of you watching this broadcast say in your heart to the Ruach, I want to be a son of light, a daughter of light. I want to be a child of the kingdom, shining a bright light for those in darkness. Somebody amen. say amen. And amen. that, by the way, isn't accomplished generally on Facebook. So just saying that is not something you can do with social media as much as interacting with your brethren. We're going to get there today. In Genesis chapter 1, we're going to see at the very beginning. I love to go back to the beginning because he calls the end. Where from? From the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 46.10. I call the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So Yahuwah Elohim, the maker of heaven and earth, the Mosai El Elyon, he has made a declaration. Some people want to challenge that. Help yourself. Not me. I'm going to stand at least 50 feet away from you while you challenge that. Right. Amen. So he says he called the end from the beginning. Let's take a look at the beginning. Amen. And it says, and the earth was without form. How many know that when you see chaos, it is formless? Yeah. Chaos is lawless. Chaos is a mess. Chaos is a hot mess. And nobody knows who's going where, who's doing what. How many of you looking at your country right now going, it's nothing but a hot mess in here. And darkness was on the face of the deep. How many know that there's plenty of darkness in the earth today? And it is on the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And right now, you can know it for a certainty. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh is moving right now among his people. 
He is moving. That's why you're watching this broadcast and ones like it, because he's moving you to understand what's going on in the earth. We warned you what would happen. We're going to tell you more about what you're going to see. And Elohim said, let there be light. What? Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. First thing he does is establish the difference between light and darkness. Was there any sun and moon involved here? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Stars? No? So this is not light coming from celestial bodies like we're used to now, where we see the light of the sun or the light of the moon or the light of the stars. No. This was before that. Mm -hmm. So he is establishing something. He is establishing as a first, the first thing he establishes into his creation is the difference between light and darkness. That's the first thing he does. And so, of course, all of the children of light are born here. All the children of darkness are somewhere else. Saints, don't think for a minute that he is not fully aware of who is and isn't slated for judgment. He says some are literally vessels of dishonor. Mm -hmm. They were made to be dishonor. Yeah. And so, again, um, this is all part of his process of raising sons. Now, you might not agree with his process. You may think, oh, I don't know if you should have done that or should have done that. You can take that up with him. But this is what he did. This is his method of sorting a harvest so he can reap sons of Elohim. Right. So he's he's putting them through various paces. He says in uh, in various places, uh, specifically in Deuteronomy, that he tested his sons. Yeah, I'm going to test you. I want to see what you're going to do. I'm going to put you in a hard place. And Deuteronomy chapter eight he says, I put you through this hard just to see what you would do. I put you through all this humbling just to watch what you would act like. Would you honor me or would you honor yourself? Ooh, right. So he's warning us. And he's telling us that in the very beginning, he's going to set a difference between light and darkness, mm -hmm. between understanding and confusion, yeah. between wisdom and folly, between knowing and not knowing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, again, the darkness is always trying to grow up and figure it out. Light walks straight to an answer. Just go ahead and ponder that for just a second. Darkness is constant confusion, a lot of bump, a lot of bruise, a lot of hurt, a lot of anger, a lot of confusion. People walking over. Think about the lights go out, man. All kinds of bad things happen. Light happens and there's bright light. You can walk right. You can walk around people. It's easy to avoid offense, easy to stay away from trouble. Why? Because you can see. Mm -hmm. Amen. And right now we live in a world where the blind lead the blind yeah, and true. both fall in the ditch. Yeah. Neither one of them could tell you how to get out of your problem. But boy, they'll sure put up a YouTube video. So you got to be careful about that. Amen. And so, again, we need to seek first his kingdom and his right way of doing things. Mm -hmm. That's what righteousness means. It's like, well, I, I found your kingdom, but now, now I want to learn. Thank you for letting me into your kingdom. So thank you for the blood of Mashiach that lets me into your kingdom. So I now have that much light. I need more light so that I will understand, so I will walk in your ways versus my old ways. How many know that light has to come in in order for that to be the case? Mm -hmm. And so that's why he splits the light from the darkness. And that's what he is referring to in a figure when he says this. Yes, there's natural light, but here he is speaking much deeper than that. He is speaking about that which separates from the holy and the profane, from the set apart and the common. In fact, when he goes into the, to the garden or when he goes to earth, when he comes upon the earth, he goes to a place and makes a garden in the east, a separate. The whole earth was good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. He declared it all good. Mm -hmm. But then what does he do? He goes and creates a place set apart within the set apart place and calls this his garden. He did. Right. And that's where he put the ruler. And so saints understand that there's more to this than we may have understood at the beginning. And now one of the things that you're dealing with is a lot of attempts to cause confusion. Remember what the scripture says, that men lie in wait to deceive. We need to speak the truth in love. A man very humbly speak the truth. And so he saw the light, that it was good. Elohim divided the light 
from the darkness. We could spend all day just on that. What is light? What is darkness? What do you call darkness? What do you think is light? Amen. I believe he wants us to understand. I believe he wants us to come to understanding his kingdom. But we first need to trust him. How many know that if you are coming into the kingdom and you don't know anything about it, and he tells you to do something that looks counter to what you were used to. So he says, humble yourself when in your other world you used to be proud. Um, that's going to seem counterculture. But the only way for you to know the benefit of doing it his way is to first obey. That's when you're going to grow up. You're not going to first learn all about it and then eventually get to doing it. No, you're going to learn in doing it. You're going to learn in obeying. You're going to understand every obedience point by doing it. Not by just studying. Everybody that wants to just study and study all the time, that's all they're doing, without actually showing themselves approved in their demonstration or proofs, right? Proofs are important because we need to look at your life to see the proofs yeah. of your doctrine. Right. Salah. Just saying. So he raises up examples for a reason. What do he say? He's going to put you on a hill. Look at this in Psalm 18. And verse 26, take a quick look uh, at this because, again, it is speaking concerning his character. And we're going to get to a certain point here where you're going to start to see that his character is manifested throughout all of creation. His abundance is manifested in the trees and the grass. How many leaves and how many blades of grass? That's his abundance. Look up at the stars of the sky, the sands of the seashore. He's speaking. His character is on display. Amen. Pay attention to this. In Psalm 18 and verse 26, it says, with... With the pure, thou wilt show thyself what? Pure. pure. And with the froward, uh-oh, this is a different person. Thou wilt show thyself froward. So he meets you where you're at and comes to where you are. For thou wilt save the afflicted people and will bring down high looks. All right? So anyone who's thinking they're better, they're going to find out they're not. Right. For thou wilt light my candle. Yahuwah my Elohim will enlighten my darkness. You see this? He is going to enlighten your darkness. So he is the one that brings light into the dark place. This is not something that we can control. Amen. How many know that when he turns on a light, sometimes you don't know, you don't want to know what he just exposed. Right. If you were in control of it, you would turn that light down a lot faster. You would let it come out only in certain ways. You might be a little more protective. Not him. He just turns it on click. It's just like mama walking in. How many have ever had mama walk in? You sleeping, you're supposed to be at school. Mama walks in, turns a whole light on and just like, ah, yep. And suddenly it's time to go, right? When he brings in the light, when he's bringing in light, it's not to disturb you. Although it does do that. It's to bring you to the truth. Amen. So he's bringing you to a place where you have breakthrough. Now, I want to just encourage you because one of the things that people continue to be deceived by is a false light, a fake light. So uh, one of the things that the, how many know the Bible says that the devil can appear as an angel of light, right? And it always seems like he's doing you a favor or blessing you in some way. Oh, no, you know, hath God really said, hath God really said, let me free you from that burden, God didn't really, oh, you know, that's not what he meant. And this is that spirit that comes as an angel of light, but is in reality leading you into destruction. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof lead on to death. Amen. And that's why we have to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. What does prove mean? It means that you have evidence, things we can look at, things that we can review. Go ahead, open your life up. Oh, you don't want to do that? Well... You know, stricter judgment and all. Amen. I mean, that's that's real, saints. And we have to be remembering that this is what he's called for. And right now we have an atmosphere that is so disrespectful to all things holy. And I'm, most of you are seeing that. It is so disrespectful. Beyond words of disrespect, there's nothing sacred. And, and that is not good. Those who think, oh, that's good. There shouldn't be anything sacred. There, everything should be common. Who do you think came up with that? Amen. In fact, one of the things that he says about the Zadok, about the priest that he will raise up in the last days, the last days, not, not 2,000 years ago, not 1,000 years ago, not 5,000 years ago. Now 
that he's going to raise up right now. What are they going to do? Set at variance between the holy and the profane. Yeah, they're restoring, not running away from, coming back to the difference between holy and common. Right. Recovering it, going back to the ancient ways, mm -hmm. right? And there's that resistance against that. There's no middle ground. There's no half in, half out. You can't borrow some stuff from Babylon and just put a little Yahusha on it. Right. Oh, that'll preach all day. That will preach all day. Okay, and that's what a lot of people have done. They've gone... They just switched names, but they kept the same doctrinal beliefs, the same powerless, proofless doctrinal beliefs. And what I mean by proofless is it doesn't have proof that we can examine and see, oh, you're right. Look, he confirmed it. Look at his confirmations in your life. Amen. And so, again, be very careful about that because there's a lot of people willing to give you free advice. Yeah. All right. They'll be happy to give you free advice, but... Um, that doesn't mean that they're here to tell you the truth. In Psalm 18, did I already quote that? Did I already read that? Psalm 18? He will enlighten your darkness. Um, and, he, and he continues to say, oh, I didn't read the whole thing. I, only, I didn't read this verse. And he says, for by thee I have run through a troop, and by my Elohim have I leapt over a wall. So I must have, my mouse must have kept going, so I must not have caught that verse. Uh, for by thee I have run through a troop. Why? Because light gives you the ability to see. When you're in darkness, you can be defeated by even an enemy that you don't even know is there. Like you run when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Yes. Amen. And so the enemy is going to run and the enemy is going to come in like a flood, saints. Don't think he isn't. Now, Psalm 119, here's where I was going. I, I didn't grab that. <laughs> I went too too far the other way. I need to grab this one. So Psalm 119, I want you to turn there very quickly. Um, and he's going to tell you something about his precepts. All right. So, you know, light and understanding are the same thing. All right. So he tells us in Proverbs chapter three and verses five and six, trust in Yahuwah with all thine heart and lean not upon thine own puny brain, right? On thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy steps. And so, this is a passage that tells us how to gain and, gra and grab wisdom, right? And so here in Psalm 119, take a look at this. Through thy precepts. What? Through thy precepts. What are those? His principles that he makes clear throughout his scripture. I get what? Light or understanding. Light starts to come into my mind through your precepts. Therefore, I hate every false way. Because what does a false way give you? Darkness. Right. So a false way or a lie gives you darkness. Thy word, which cuts through the darkness, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, so that is what the word is doing. Right. And, and he says, uh, I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep the right thy righteous judgments. And so as we read this, we see that the will of Yahuwah and through the psalmist, we see that desire coming out by the Ruach. I'm going to keep your ways, not I'm going to change your ways, modify your ways or come up with acute, you know, uh, rationalizations to go around them. And again, I keep coming back to we can do all things through Mashiach who strengthens us. Who said the standard went down? Uh, right. So if the standard is going down, why did you need extra dunamis? Right. It's because you need to exceed, watch this, exceed, one more time, exceed the righteousness of the scribes of the Pharisees, or you will in no wise enter therein. You have to exceed their righteousness. And so he empowered you with turbo. So whatever they did, you do more. Okay, they're meeting minimum requirements. You exceed the minimum requirements. They're they're stopping at this port. You you go past it. They go one mile. You go in two. Are you getting the theme? You seen the precept, the principle, his point. He wants that to be in everything you do. They said this. You went here. They said here. You went here. You continue to exceed expectations you do more than is expected not trying to meet the minimum requirement that's the way of Cain Selah that which is rebuked in the book of Jude the way of Cain the way of error 
Cain wanted to do only what he had to do, the minimum requirement, and even that he wasn't even trying to do. And no fire fell. They both come into the same Elohim. No fire fell. This is why we need light, because we need to know our crooked way. Thy word, his word will do what? Help us out. Help us understand, oh, that's not the right way to do it. Let me do it the right way. Oh, now the fire fell, and I have proofs. I have proof. Remember he said, prove all things. Prove how many things? How many? All. Uh, just check it. Okay, so prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, that which diminishes pain and increases prosperity, right? So hold fast to those holy things. Hold fast to what you prove to be true. And we take a look at doctrines all the time. People come up and talk about all kinds of things. And we got to prove it. And we just say prove it, right? We were talking today about a situation where many years ago I wrote a course um, because I was watching my brethren who are struggling economically. They're struggling with their battles, right? And so Yahuwah put it on my heart. This was, this was like 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And he put it on my heart to write a course about this. And I really dug deep. And I mean, I spent months on this course, uh, on putting the material together, recording it, making observations, um, writing down the things he was showing me. And then finally I compiled it and, and shared it. And when I finished sharing it, one of my brothers said, well, that's all great. And it was about, you know, getting breakthrough and, and you know, overcoming... Uh, especially your economic challenges and what have you. And he says, you know, well, that's great. That's great. You're talking great. You know, that's good talk, right? But let me see you do it. <laughs> okay. Right? He said, let me see you do it. Big talker, right? And and good point. I'm a kid from the Bronx, Puerto Rican from the Bronx, great test case, right? And so he told me, you know, I, I want to see you do it because I'm, I'm not sure I believe everything you're sharing over here. No problem. So I told him parameters. I said, I'm going to do this certain amount of money in one year. And, and he's like, okay. I said, watch, I'll, I'll, I'll prove it. I'll start right now and I'll prove to you what I showed you, what I'm doing is real, right? And I said, here's the amount. And he's like, okay, if you can do that in one year, call me, right? I called him in nine months. Nine months, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> how do you think that conversation went? He's like, well, you proved it. Right? You preach something and then you proofed it. Mm -hmm. You got it confirmed by the Holy One. It's not just your theory anymore. Now we have a proof. It's like you have an idea, a hypothesis, but when you put proofs to it and then it's actually being tested and proves to be true, and it's no longer a hypothesis. I mean, now it's a formula. Now it is an actual path, method or pathway. And his word gives us the formulas. His word tells us the way out. Right. And so I don't take advice from people in poverty about how to get out of poverty. Right. Amen. I just don't. I go talk to the people that did get breakthrough That's right. and find out how they did it. That's right. Mom and I have given our way out of poverty how many times now? Three, four times. There's only one way out. There's only one way out, and we keep proving it. We can prove it again if you like, but we keep proving it. The only way out is to give, yep. to be a giver, to be somebody who is gives, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I gave away so much, I had nothing left. I had yeah. zero and literally was chuckling because I knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Pressed down, shaking together, yeah, running, running over, it would return. Yep. It Every true. single time, down is up in this kingdom. It doesn't work. The way that people think it does. And why is this important for us to understand? Because this is light, saints. This is what the kingdom of darkness doesn't get. And you're coming out of the kingdom of darkness, which is why you need his word to be a lamp unto your feet. Somebody say amen. amen. And it is a simple, humble obedience. And you know, saints, we can get ourselves in trouble when we think higher than we ought. We have to be very careful. Okay. Um, and he says that he wants us to keep. He says, this is a, you know, we're not supposed to swear. And yet this is in the scripture. I have sworn and I will perform it. Now, Messiah clears this up and says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. All you should have to say is a son of Elohim is yes. Think about what he's saying. The moment you say yes, the world just changed. You said yes, that's it. The world changed because your word is that powerful. That's how he wants you to be as a son. Amen. And he says that I will keep thy righteous judgment. So are you one of the sons that say, I'm going to keep your judgments, whether I agree necessarily or not, I'm still going to keep your judgments because I know that my mind is being renewed. My mind is the one that's suspicious. 
My mind is the one I'm not sure I can trust, but your word is a light and it keeps me from going following my own understanding. Somebody say amen. amen. His word keeps us on the path. Somebody say amen. amen. In Matthew chapter 5, we know that there's going to be great persecutions. And many of you are about to see, if you're not already seeing, great rise in persecution. 20 years ago, I was sent to, this, to 40 cities around this country with the word, prepare for the coming persecution. You still haven't seen what he showed me. So it's on its way. We're seeing it warming up to it. It's getting there. We're, we're getting there. But it's about to cross a new level of persecution where you are literally hated because you're a believer. Where you're hated because you're on a certain side. You're not, you're not with the other crew and you're not with the sons of darkness. They're going to hate you. They're going to destroy you. All right. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness, for doing things the right way. For righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the way you gain the kingdom is to suffer persecution for righteousness' sake. So if persecution makes you drop righteousness, you drop the kingdom. Boom. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For whose sake? Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward where? In heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they see your what? Good works. Your what? Good works. Your good works the proofs proof of your doctrines proof of your beliefs proofs of your work preach the gospel only if necessary use words they see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven they see your proofs saints amen remember prove all things hold fast that which is good now personally what i believe and i see this consistently is that when Yahuwah is blessing a man and he causes that man to be strong, one of the telltale signs of that blessing is that man will be a blessing to everyone else around him. Uh, one of the things that we see clearly about those who are elders and leaders and teachers, teachers, okay, in the household of faith, they are also employers, not employees, okay? So they, this is a consistent thing. You see this throughout the scripture. You'll see them rise. Why? Because you will put them in positions of authority. And look at, look at the apostles. They set seven men just over tables alone. That's employer. They are employment. They are employing. They're putting people to work. They've got enough going on that they can do that. Saints, this is an important principle. And one of the things that we see in this passage, he's saying, let your light so shine before men that they would see good works. They need to see that. Right. So your testimony is way more important than your YouTube channel. Just saying your testimony is way more important than your Facebook profile. All right. That does not get you any points. What gets you somewhere in the kingdom is being about the father's word in the real world, in the real world. What we call people around you and not you, because you'll always pat yourself on the back. Right. But. The people around you and what are we going to hear man this person is building up this person is doing this this person is doing that you're hearing good works you're hearing about those good works and now we glorify abba in heaven for that person don't we if you hear about somebody that's laying their life down for other people don't you give abba a little bit of praise for that person like you hear about somebody it's like tirelessly helping the poor, tirelessly helping the, the hurting, tirelessly helping those that are struggling. You hear about that person, right? You want to clap. You want to be like, oh man, great, good job. Like, wow, thank you. Like, wow, mad, mad respect, mad props. 
major, major props for you. Mad respect for you. Why? Because we see it's not normal. Amen. It's not a common thing. We see a lot of people talking, but not a lot of people walking. A lot of people will pay lip service to the kingdom, but when it comes time to actually care about their brother, they're not there. Amen. They're not there. And so they're, why, why is that? Because their heart's not full of honor. Oh, saints, I got to just, I got to preach this because you see, there's a difference between those who know how to honor him and those that only are trying to meet minimum requirements. People just trying to meet minimum requirements are not looking at honor. By the way, honor in any area, whether it be in the tithe or in uh, keeping the Shabbat or respecting his commandments, or honoring your mother and your father, right? None of it is convenient. None of it. It's only honor because it's inconvenient. And some will say, well, I don't have to. You don't. You know, all the members of Remnant House, we bless you all. Thank you so much for being a part of this house. We, it's not required. You don't have to be a member of this house to be saved. Right. Amen. You are invited to be a part of a ministry house, a family, but you don't have to be. Right. And you can say, no, thank you. And still come and watch broadcast. And we'll still love on you and kiss you and pray for you and love you. Because we don't, you know, that's that's how we do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But if you want to be a partaker, or we're going to get there today. If you're going to be a partner, if you're going to be involved, that's a different standard, right? right? In the same way in the kingdom, if you want to be part of the kingdom, you had to come all the way in. How many know that he has no problem telling the lukewarm what he's going to do with them? He doesn't mince words. He said, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That whole half in, half out thing, I'm not playing with that. I'm not employing that. I'm not working with you. I'm not giving you a rope, and I'm not going to put you in a position of power. You're half in and half out. Get out, all the way out. I would rather you be cold. So I'm going to spit you out, he says. This is a dangerous place. That's why we need to be completely in, fully on, fully on board, completely on fire to do his will. Somebody help me. Help me preach this thing today. Amen. So he says that your light, let the light of the glorious gospel, let what you've learned. Right. So you say, oh, I know all these deep truths. OK, 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 boo boo. You got it. You going. OK, here's the thing. Go show it to us. Show us by your great conversation, by your excellent conversation, by your excellent conduct, by your beautiful way in which you manifest the will of Yahuwah. Now we will know your doctrine, man. Your doctrines, woof, wow. But if all you're doing is popping smoke, right? We need to see it. It needs to be more than just declarations. It needs to be stuff that changes habitation. Somebody say, man, I want to know that he's living there, not visiting. I want to know that that is real. Why? Because that testimony starts to bless me. When I see real, and how many of you have ever seen real testimonies? People that came out of poverty, people that came out of nothing, and Yahuwah blessed them and strengthened them and put them in a place of authority like Joseph. Okay, Joseph is a good example of proof, of the proof. That's proof. He went from, from being in prison to being second only to Pharaoh, running the whole thing in charge, right? Yahuwah proved him. He proved it. He proved the prophetic word that he got was real. Amen. And it didn't happen because Joseph desired it a certain way. No, Yahuwah did it. Yahuwah put him up. And whom Yahuwah exalts and anoints and appoints, he will empower. Right. And so, again, we can't do that for ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. I like to think of it this way. There's two jobs. You pick which one you want to do. Yahuwah will do the other one. There's humble and there's exalt. If you exalt yourself, he will humble you. If you humble yourself, he will exalt you. Amen. It's that simple. So if you want to be exalted, you want to be blessed, you want to come up, you got to humble yourself. I'll never forget when I was a young man and just coming into the work of the ministry. And one of the areas that he had to put me through fire, bang, was in giving. And I was just telling this story to mama today. I was talking about when... There was a time when uh, I, it got so bad, it was, you know, sometimes he'll reduce you down to the level that you're ready to be faithful. And that got me down as low as you get in America. And so I got my little welfare card and I'm going, man, this is embarrassing. Wow. And he just put it in my heart. Start giving. I'm impoverished. I am poor as they come. Start giving. So I'm going to tell you what we did. Now, I don't tell these stories enough. I should tell them more often. 
But this is how you know you got the light of the Holy Gospel coming into you because he makes you do things you would never think to do before. And so we weren't, we were just starting out. When you're in ministry, not only do you receive, but you need to give. Okay? So if you're in ministry, you not only receive, but you give. It has to flow through you. If it doesn't, this is one of the first lessons he taught me. All right? This is old, old lesson. All right? And sure enough, I didn't care what I was starting off with because I could give my way out of anything. It's the first time I did it. And I began to put the groceries for the money I got, the tithe groceries, the first fruits in a different cart. And guess what we did with those? We took those to people that we knew needed some extra help and we gave it, right? And gave ourselves right out of it. And then, of course, you know, he began to do other things and teach me other principles. But the point was he was trying to show me that you are responsible for these results. Yeah. You can change the results by changing what you're doing. Yes. Stop yes. acting like a victim. Yeah. All right. When he's given you his son, he gave you the, the way to become a victor. That's right. You are no longer a chump. You are a champion. Somebody say amen. amen. And so you stay where you get what you go get. If you want to stay there, you can stay there. But poverty is a choice. No, having, um, th having that situation stay there generationally, that's a choice. It's one thing for you to have a cash flow problem. That's temporary. You have a moment in your life. You're struggling. You're having a tough time. But staying there perpetually, that's a choice. And saints, that's what he wants to give you breakthrough out of. And it's not about the economics or anything like that. It's about you making choices that prove your doctrine's correct. That prove what you're doing is right. That when he shows himself strong on your behalf, you go... Thank you, Father, for showing me that. Okay, now I'm doing it this way. And you will not be able to change the way. Once you get that breakthrough, you're not taking that. You can never take that from me. After having given my way out of repeatedly, come from literally nothing. And this, and sometimes intentionally, right? <laughs> just give it all away. And he just, you just gave, gave, gave. And lo and behold, because you were generous, because you were kind, because you were full of his spirit, it all comes back, pressed down, shaking together, running over. So his word is true. I am a witness and a testimony that his word is true. Amen. Amen. And so, again, not everybody lets their light so shine before men. Uh, so, again, we want, we want to do that. We want to share the testimony and share the things that he's done. And he has exceedingly and abundantly and above given to us what we needed. And, again, what do we do with it? Those that are around us see what he does with the resources he puts in our hands. Our hands are constantly looking for ways to prosper our brethren. That's right. I'm going to say that again because I don't just say it. I mean it. Behind closed doors, my focus is perpetually on how we can bless our brethren. Yes. Amen. This is very important to me. Amen. This is beyond words. And this is how you know that he's put that growth into a servant because they're no longer concerned about themselves. They're not spending all their time just thinking about how they're going to do better. No, they're spending all their time thinking about how you're going to do better, how you're going to have breakthrough, praying for you, praying for your life, praying for your children, praying for your family, praying for your marriage, praying for your business, praying for your breakthrough, praying against your debt, praying against your mortgage, calling those things to go away, commanding them to be gone from your life. That is what a house is supposed to be for. Somebody amen. say amen. And so we fight together against these wicked things, trying to bind our brethren that we may walk in the truth. Oh, hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, again, Messiah told us and Peter the apostle warns about persecution and that because you're speaking the name of the one who not only made everything, but has remade everything when you were born again, you got to know that you anger these people on the other side worse than Trump haters. <laughs> if you think they hate Trump, <laughs> let me tell you who they hate more than Trump. Okay? Believe that. Okay? Um, they don't want to hear no, nothing other than I'm going to heaven. And I'm blessed, 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 blessed. They don't want to hear it. Um, and so that, that same TDS that goes off there, well, that's been going off for 2,000 years towards Messiah. So you, you guys can get a contextual picture of that and go, wow, this is crazy. I know. I know. And it's going to get worse. When you don't repent, 
the, the equipment never gets wreck never gets uh, um, uh, baselined. It doesn't get calibrated. So a, a failure to repent is a failure to come back to baseline. Uh, so you lose sight of what's right and wrong. Plain and simple. And that's what you're watching. You're watching literal insanity. And you're going to see people double down and, and literally justify abject wickedness. And they'll be justifying it like, what? I haven't done anything wrong. And you'll be sitting there going, I don't even know who I'm talking to. And like, what are you on? Well, welcome to our world. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 4, he says, if you be reproached for the name of Mashiach, happy are ye. So how many of you are getting reproached because you say, Yahusha, you're chasing after his real name. You're not satisfied with some surface thing. You're digging. He says, happy are you when you're reproached for the name of Mashiach. For the spirit of glory and of Elohim rest, rest, resteth upon you. And their part he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let not none of you suffer as a murderer. So don't suffer for the wrong reasons. Some people try to act like everything they suffer is because of persecution. No, you're a murderer. You're going to suffer for that. you a thief. What's that? Well, a thief is somebody that takes and touches things that don't belong to him. So that which belongs to Yahuwah, he touches. That which belongs to his brethren, he touches. Well, you're going to suffer for that. Or as an evildoer. So somebody that's doing wicked things. Or as a busybody, check this out, in other men's matters. Yep, he mixed that right up there with murderer. I'm going to say that again. He put that right next to murderer and thief. Thief, murderer, and meddler. All the same. Yet if any man suffer as a Mashiachin, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify Elohim on this behalf. All right? And so he wants you to walk as the anointed. If you walking as one of his anointed, as a believer, if you're suffering because you are walking under and in the anointing and producing good fruit, and that is getting you persecuted, that's a different story. Then you've got uh, treasure in heaven. And so you cannot claim the treasure in heaven thing if you're not being persecuted for righteousness that's bringing forth fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, bringing forth fruit meaning people getting saved, people getting healed, delivered, uh, fruit people are seeing your life and giving him glory, magnifying him. They're like looking at you going, Abba is amazing. Um, Yahuwah, you're amazing. If that isn't being invoked by them just being around you, then you need to keep puffing. You need to keep going, keep working. We ain't there yet. Come on, huff and puff. Let's keep going. He's not done with you. Amen. And, you know, somebody said to me, man, somebody gets saved 45 minutes later. They got a YouTube channel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they get saved 45 minutes later. They want to be a teacher. Right. <laughs> and we need to learn to make a difference between somebody just sharing testimonies and sharing their thoughts versus the fivefold. Yes. The authorized, released uh, vessels of Yahuwah who are his modern day priesthood and by the way it says so in the scripture you are a chosen generation yes. a royal what priesthood. a holy nation yep. a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light as we read the Dittache, which is the uh, doctrine of the first century apostles you get a lot of instruction on how to conduct yourself did you know that you could only stay two or three days in somebody's house after that you're either working or you're gone and that first century lifestyle was very righteous. Um, and it's a different lifestyle. It's a different world. And the expectations are different. There isn't that welfare mentality. Yeah, definitely. Okay, there's no welfare mentality over there. That, that is a thought that came from some other place. There's none of that. There's six days of work. Oh, you don't, you don't, you know, you poor? Let me ask you a question, folks. This is all free. If somebody is poor... There are two things you can do. You can give them money or you can arrest their poverty. That's right. right? So you can just arrange for them to get a little food for today. We've all done it at the end of the freeway or out of the store. Or you're walking through town and somebody you clearly can see has no means, man. They are sitting outside on with all the clothes they have and all the food they have. And your compassion, your bowels of compassion is stirred and you give them money or you give them food or you give them something, right? Okay, that's different. Than meeting that person saying, come with me. Why? I'm going to give you a job, a house, an apartment, a car. I'm going to get you out of the situation. Which would you rather have? If you're the impoverished person, which person would you like to meet? Right. Would you like to meet 
somebody that just gives you a little something and leaves you there, or the person that says, I'm going to give to the Pope. Amen. I'm going to give wisdom. I'm going to give knowledge. I'm going to give understanding. I'm going to give employment mm -hmm. to the poor. Yeah. That's a grown up. Amen. And so he's calling for a lot of grown ups. He's calling us for be, to be grown ups, not to just, you know, feel, make ourselves feel better with small gestures, but to be all in for your brother and not just go one mile, but go two. This is light, saints. This is what light will do for you. Amen. So, um, and again, not everybody, a lot of people can say or claim offices and positions and what have you, but you will be judged accordingly, right? When you have to compare yourselves that were supernaturally empowered to do those jobs, that may not be such a good thing to have to stand next to them. So saints, let us all find our place and walk in it. Amen. Let us not covet that which belongs to another man. And if you suffer as a, as a believer, um, let don't be ashamed of that, but glory on Elo, uh, glorify Elohim because of that, because you are suffering because of righteousness, right? If somebody's making fun of you or telling you don't need, need to do that, hath God really said, right? right? And so they're going to be those that are going to do that. Hey, as a member of this house, you're a faithful giver and a faithful supporter. Do you have to do that? No, you don't have to. You could go do it. You could do something else with it. But those that are faithful here know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Right. They have a reason for it. We're going to get there today in Mark chapter 12 and verse 41. Let's take a look at Messiah because he is the same yesterday, today. today. So that today was 2,000 years ago. We're about to read some and then and forevermore. So he hasn't changed because he was perfect. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't changed. Just saying, watch this. Mark chapter 12, verse 41, and Yahusha sat over against the treasury. What? He sat over against the treasury. What? What you sitting there for? I thought that was going to be abolished. I thought we were all done with that. And beheld how people cast money into the treasury. He's watching with his eyes. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow, which cast more in than all they that have cast into the treasury, for all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Notice that Messiah does not say, Oh no, honey, no, 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 you don't need to do that. I know you're Pope. Come on now, I know you're Pope. You're so po, you should take those two mites and go buy yourself something to eat, honey. It's okay. No, he doesn't say that. He does not say that. And he is a champion of the poor. Now, so how come he's just watching this woman give her two mites to the treasury? Which, as he's already told you, the wealthy had already cast in much. So it wasn't because, that, watch this now, that the treasury was doing a fundraiser and really needed the money. They weren't up talking about it. He was just standing over watching it. And he watched this woman walk up very humbly and gave her last two mites. Now, you might say, oh, this poor, poor woman. But you might not know the whole story. We are all watching this. Let me ask you a question, woman of Elohim, woman of Israel. Why are you down to your last two mites? I mean, what's going on in your world that you're at that place? But never mind that. Here you are. But look what you do with your last bit. And Messiah takes note of it. Why is this important? Because again, saints, while the, the poor are a recipient of one of the three tithes, there are three tithes in Israel. They are also expected to get out of their poverty. Because if you do not have, you cannot be a blessing. That's right. So you're supposed to work your way out of that. And so you start where you are. Now, what I saw when I saw this and see if you've never been through this yourself personally, you might not see it this way. But what I saw was that extra cart of groceries. That's what I saw when I read that. I was like, oh, I see what he did. He's like, are you ready yet? Going to obey me yet? I'll take you all the way down, all the way down. Oh, you going to obey me now? Now, now I'm going to note it. I'm going to take note of you. I'm going to see you doing that. I'm going to see you finally decided to obey me. You're starting to believe me. Now you're going to get blessed. 
as you gave me everything. You finally came and gave me everything. You're more blessed than those guys. Then the people you're coveting, the people you're looking at, wishing you had their wealth, you're more blessed than them. Messiah made that clear. Why? Because it's an all-in heart. He finally got you to all-in. Mm. Had to get you down to your last two mics to do it, but he finally got you to all-in. I know you probably never read that story that way, but that's the way I saw it. He finally got you. Finally got you to all-in. Mm. Mm -mm. How many know that when you're all-in, he's going to come all-in? Yeah, I've watched him do it too many times. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's like once you have that anointing on you, once you know that that's the way you could be, everything could be taken from you. You start all over again. And guess what? You won't stay there. No, you won't. You want to know why? Because his blessing will be upon you because you have understanding of his kingdom. You start applying his principles just like Joseph did when he went into prison. You think he wanted to go to prison? No. But he went in there and started acting like a son of Elohim. And he got the prison all straightened up to the point where they, they put him in charge of the prison. He, he acted like a son of Elohim no matter where he went. Oh, hallelujah. So how many know that he had to serve his way out of the prison? Yes, he did. He served his way right out of there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He served the, the the baker and the other one, right? I forget. Right. What was it? The baker and the butler or something like that? <laughs> and so he served them both. And he interpreted their dreams. And as a result of his service to them, what happened to him? And so, saints, understand that though you find yourself in a difficult spot, his principles, his precepts are the light of your path. You will walk out of that situation because you obeyed his word. You put his word up and he had to prove it. He says, prove me now herewith. Yes. Prove it. I want proofs. Things that people can see. Somebody say amen. amen. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm coming in for a landing. Being not, uh, And he tells us uh, to not be deceived. Watch this now because there's a lot of deception in the world. Let no man deceive you. With vain, empty, useless words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Elohim upon the children of disobedience. So they're they're supposed to be obeying. Apparently in Ephesians, New Testament, they're not obeying. They're children of disobedience. And look what he says. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. You're not anymore. But now you are light in Yahuwah. Walk as children of of light for in the fruit of the spirit is all goodness righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto Yahuwah and have no fellowship with the unfruitful have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them so again we're looking at your life we're, we can't hear your YouTube video because we're too busy looking at your life right and this is an important principle because, again, we all have to have proofs that demonstrate the reality of a changed life. That is something that is fruit. That is the fruit of the Spirit, right? So when you meet somebody and they're hateful, okay, they ain't loving. <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> they need a little more Holy Spirit in there, right? Um, and when you meet people that don't have love or joy or peace or long-suffering or patience or kindness or meekness, they ain't got none of that. <laughs> Okay, you ain't saved. You still need to get saved, right? <clears throat> but you no longer are that person. You're now transformed out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light, right? And now you walk as a child of light. How does that look? <laughs> really different. Really different. He is first and foremost to you. He's the highest. He's the number one. That was not the case before. Now it is. Now you're all in like the widow with our last two mites. All in. Amen and amen. Took you a while to get there. Might have to break it down a little bit. I mean, no, he has to break us down. I mean, no, he has to break us to the point where we're like, okay, I'm done. I'm done fighting and arguing with you. Your way is the right way. Now he brings you up one step at a time. In Revelation chapter 18, I'm coming in for a landing. And it says in verse 21, a mighty angel took up a stone and a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down. Any questions about how Babylon's going to fall? No. Okay. In the same way that a great millstone is thrown down into the sea, 
Thus with violence, so he's telling you it's going to be a similar thing. It's going to seem like it was like this. And the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all, plucked up and remembered no more. And the voice of the harpers, the musicians, the pipers, the trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. That's pretty quiet. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. You hearing this? This is a complete separation. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all they that were slain upon the earth so what is the end of this he's bringing us to a complete separation from the kingdom of darkness that which defies him that which argues Cain and Abel one says I'm doing it your way the other says I don't care he's getting rid of I don't care those folks don't have a future Amen. And so if you're one of those that are slowly coming into righteousness, you're seeking first his kingdom and his right way to conduct yourself with your stuff, with your people, with your friends, with your family, with yourself, with everything in your circle. And you're getting that by the Ruach. You're getting that by the spirit. I believe now is the hour that you must be a full, complete, all in doer of his word. Be as wise as the widow. Go all in. Because this is an hour when you need him to be all in with you. Remember, with the humble, he shows himself what? Humble. But with the froward, he shows himself froward. So you're going to get what you go get. Now's a good time to be merciful, kind, generous, loving, and indeed full of his shalom. Somebody say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for correction. We thank you for bringing us to a place where we can be found faithful. Thank you, Father, for the correction, the fire and the bang until we're giving to you that which you have ordained. And I pray, Father, that we would honor you not only in the first things that you give us, but also in all the thoughts, intents of our heart that our thoughts and our intentions would be perpetually to bless you, to honor you, to honor your kingdom, and to bless and strengthen our brethren. Let our hearts and minds be set to do so. In Mashiach's holy name I pray. And the people said, amen, amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, I'm so happy today. It is a happy day. And I'm tired. It's been a long week. But I'm excited because I know that the Galileans are getting breakthrough. Amen. All of his people, his sons, his daughters are getting their breakthrough. While the world is devolving into more and more crazy. And I mean, they crazy. Okay. While they're devolving into their crazy, he is lifting up his people. He is bringing light in, blessing, and in strengthening all of you. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm so glad to be able to watch it. To watch this moment unfold. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. You notice that we just come and freely we receive, freely we give. You can come and sit and watch these broadcasts anytime you want. If you want to send us a note for more prayer, if you have uh, questions or issues, feel free to drop a comment right here on the discussion, uh, right here on the video, right here on YouTube. Feel free to do that. We're happy to respond. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, we're happy to pray with you. And, and chat with you, answer any questions that you may have. Ours is always to be a servant to his people. It's a blessing and honor for me to serve those so greatly loved by the King of glory. I truly, truly mean that. And so uh, it is our honor. Mama and I are always thankful that we get this opportunity. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. May his blessing be upon your Shabbat, upon all your households. May Yahuwah bless each. And every one of you, and remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings.
The Lord is a shield all 